I'm Dan Fitzpatrick at StockMarketMentor.com on uh, Tuesday, April 3rd. And uh, look, um, let's look at Apple for a second. Um, the stock was up again um, today. This is the weekly chart, so don't get freaked out. It wasn't up 30 points. It was just, that's just where it's been over the last five trading days. Um, but, you know, it's funny. There's, depending on what's happening with the stock, um, CNBC seems to trot out either bulls or bears, and it's, you know, no, uh, nothing malicious involved. That's just like what they do. Um, so the stock keeps going up and they trot out the bears. The stock goes down. They trot out the bulls. And I guess it makes for interesting TV. But it doesn't really help you if you stray from the chart. Now, with that said, look at the stock trailing. It's running right along the upper Bollinger Band on the weekly chart. On the weekly chart now. Now, this isn't actually an easy stock to trade unless you're over leveraged. Um, I suspect that a lot of you, the folks who are listening to this video, hold a lot of Apple calls. You know why? Because that's what you do, right? I know. Um, I see you. Um, so you hold a lot of Apple calls. The problem is then the stock falls five, six, seven, eight points in a day, and you get uh, concerned as you should, and you sell. Then the stock retraces its the, the downside, that the down move, and starts moving higher again. And then you wind up buying them back, oh, right at the top. Um, so don't do that. If you're going to trade calls, and frankly, when a stock's 630 bucks, there's nothing wrong with trading call options. In fact, by the way, in a few weeks, I'll be teaching an online option course where I talk about that very thing, how... It's really foolish to buy the stock when you can buy particular options that give you literally the same exposure, uh, and I'm talking dollar for dollar, for the fraction of the price. Um, but I want to just stick with this. Let's assume you're trading the stock. There's no question that this is a big parabolic move, but it's not like we're trading a biotech company here or a dot-com company or a social media company or anything like that. What we're trading is... a the stock of a company that is a real disruptor on a lot of different levels, whether it's from the, you know, in the retail space as far as just how much revenue they generate per square footage, um, tech company, et cetera, et cetera. You know the drill. You know Apple. Um, you may probably be listening to this or watching this video on a Mac. Um, but look, let's look at a couple things here. See this little Bollinger Band hook? This little guy there, that can be a predictor or a forecaster of a loss of upside momentum. Doesn't have to be this. It just typically forecasts a loss of upside momentum, if only as a pause and then a move higher. Um, Want to see this? How it you know has acted before? Okay, we got a little bit here. And you can see the stock did trail sideways, but you see this little hook. That's not the biggest deal, though, because it wasn't that big of an expansion. Here, you've got a real big expansion on the Bollinger Bands. Back here was a little bigger. Doesn't look like it relative to here, but trust me, it was. Um, you get a hook there. What happens with the stock shortly thereafter? And we're looking at a weekly chart. Shortly thereafter, the stock traded sideways. Don't you look at this chart right now? and kind of get the sense that maybe this stock isn't going to keep going up into the stratosphere, but it might just kind of trail sideways for a bit. Um, I was saying over the weekend when I was talking at the Invest Like a Monster conference in Newport Beach, I was talking about this one as well as Priceline, how the fundamentals are what are propping the stock up. And, you know, I hear these guys on CNBC talk about, oh, the law of large numbers and uh, the market cap is not going to exceed one trillion bucks. And by the way, I don't know if it's going to or not, but they they talk in generalities, which frankly are kind of stupid, if you ask me, because there's nothing particularly general about the market or about Apple. And don't get the wrong impression. I'm not an Apollonian. Uh, I'm a fan of this chart, but I'm not necessarily a fan of the company. In fact, don't tell anybody, but I still use PCs to do most of my work, even though I have a lot of Apple products. 
but there's nothing that inherently meritorious, or to put it another way, I just don't think just standing by themselves, the law of large numbers has any impact on a particular company here. Just because ExxonMobil wasn't able to get over the hump has no reflection on Apple, which is kind of a different animal. So here's the thing. We're going to zoom out, look further. You can see this kind of sideways drift, right? Okay, now we got the big whoop de doo here. So here we got what? Another hook. And then shortly thereafter, not right at, in fact, this is why it's not really a timing indicator. This was back here in June. We finally got the, the move about eight weeks, six to eight weeks later. Um, similarly, back here, you see the same thing. You get this Bollinger Band hook in um, December 2004. You get a little move to the downside, but then, of course, what happens? My gosh, the stock splits, and then it's off to the races. The point is, this hook on the weekly chart does reflect something going on with the stock, and that is a decline in upside momentum. Now, let's look at the daily chart. I don't really see it too much here, um, not at all, although we do have this. Let's just draw a line. First of all, support line, nothing wrong with that support line. That's Jeff Mackey's purple crayon. He says, just draw the line and walk away when it breaks trend, um, then sell. Nothing wrong with that. But if we draw the purple crayon here on resistance, what are we getting? We're getting a stock that in order to confirm this trend line as defining the top of the channel. Here it fell a little short, but still the trend line remains. In order for this to happen, Apple's going to have to go outside the upper Bollinger Band again or reverse course in time. And, you know, we don't have a time machine, so you can't do that. But it's going to have to go up um, above the upper Bollinger Band again and tag the stock somewhere up here. Excuse me, tag the resistance line. See if I can speak in English here. It's going to have to go above the upper Bollinger Band again and tag the resistance line in order to maintain this trend. I just can't see it doing that. I can see it continuing to drift sideways here, but ultimately I think you're going to get a little tapering off just like we've had here. So what's the prognosis on Apple? I think the stock still goes higher. It's ripe for a little correction. Um, don't be over leveraged on your calls. Um, that's just silly. Uh, if you want to write bull put spreads, um, definitely go ahead and do that. Just make sure they're a bit out of the money. Don't get too aggressive because if the stock reverses on you, you're going to get killed. But if you keep them uh, you know, quite a ways out of the money, the premium that you get on puts is still pretty high. Why? Because there's a lot of folks that are starting to bet against Apple. But just know that if Apple comes back down, and it's just a couple of trading days ago when Apple was down um, below 600, now it's 630 bucks. What's that? 5% higher than it was here. If Apple falls back below that level, you're probably going to get an even you know greater sideways drift here. So I would suggest if you're long and you've been long for a while. Keep a tight stop on part of your position. Don't sell the whole thing. There's no reason to. There have been plenty of times when you could have sold the whole thing here or here or here. And if you had, you missed out on this move. So go ahead and keep some on the table, but get ready to take some off. In fact, what I'd suggest doing is use 622.51 as a reference for your first profit taking. If the stock falls below 622.51, then considering, then consider taking some off the table because again, you look on this uh, weekly chart, you can see the hook on the Bollinger Band and that typically means that the easy money is behind you. Now, just a quick heads up, uh, last time we've raised our prices was like back in 2009, so it's been a while. I'm just letting you know that um, sometime pretty soon, I'm not exactly sure when because my brother Gary controls all that, I just look at charts. Uh, we're going to be raising the price on Stock Market Mentor. I'm not exactly sure how much, but I know it's going to be over 20%. So if you want to get in on the current prices, then you need to go ahead and take advantage of that right now. 
Again, I'm not exactly sure when that's going to happen or what the price increase will be, but it's going to be over 20%. And once it's up, it's up. We don't make exceptions um, because what happens is people that do subscribe, whatever subscription rate you are in on, that is yours for life. And so we've got people in that have been members for years that are on lower tiers. And what we can't do and what we won't do is let somebody, let a newcomer come in and take advantage of the old price. So get that done sooner rather than later.